number. We've hit the legendary number, 23. Legendary to us, because Chicago, number 23, everybody knows it's greatness, Air Jordan. Welcome to the 23rd and the last episode for this season of The Lockup. I am your host, Junior Reeves, alongside my co-host, the sound effects machine, the guy who can give, uh, I forgot the actor's name, dude from Police Academy, uh, that guy, the one that makes Michael all the Michael Winslow. Sense. That guy. Michael Winslow. The guy that didn't give him a run for his money, Brian Adams. I wish. Well, yeah, you said, shh. I on, wish. That, that, that's that's yeah. great. That's massive. Look <laughs> Beatboxing. No, I'm just making fun of Michael Winslow and his little stupid, those stupid little noises they make. Yeah. No, you don't remember? Yeah, I remember. I'm just looking at you because that was classic for that time. Okay. Right on. It was for that time, but now it's just like, kids right, today be like, what is that dumb stuff? We haven't done a, a lockup in two weeks now, two, three weeks. A while. So, a lot of stuff. Um, we're going to start off with one of the biggest blows that come to WWE recently. Seth Rollins? Seth Rollins. Why did you look at me like that? I, because I've been anxious to talk about this ever since happened. Seth Rollins. And you know how since we do this show, me and you don't talk wrestling stuff. Right. Until we sit down to record. Correct. So I've been holding on to this for a week. All right. Well, you got to spill it. I'm just, uh, man. For that's... those if, that have been living under a rock, Seth Rollins has injured himself in a match against Kane during their uh, UK tour. Tour is ACL, MCL, just messed up his whole leg. Yeah. Um, they say he's out six to nine months. Six so he, to nine months. He was forced to relinquish the WWE title, which I think sucked because, I mean, dude, regardless of how they're booking him as stories, physically the guy's a, a strong champion. You know, and I don't mean strong like, hey, look how much weight I can lift. I just mean the guy has the potential. Like, put him in the right storyline, great, you know. But unfortunately, Rollins is injured. So now WWE has announced a tournament to crown a new champion. Uh, which will happen at Survivor Series next week. Well, the tournament's already been going down. Right, right, right. But the, I mean, the you know the finals of the tournament will yeah. happen at Survivor Series. My thing here, here. One thing first. Do you think that they should have just awarded Roman Reigns the title because he was the number one contender, or are they doing it right by doing a tournament to crown a new champion? I, even though he had already earned the right, so to speak. I like what they did storyline wise with it. Whereas Triple H pretty much came out and said, if you're willing to be my guy, you're the champ. Right. Because you know, you've earned back it. Back of the line, right. But if not, screw you, buddy. Right. I, I like it. No, I don't think they should have just handled it in the belt. Okay. I don't. Because he wouldn't have earned it. So Rollins being injured, though, changes a lot of things. You know, obviously they have to scramble to get a new champion. Mm -hmm. This new champion has to be written into upcoming stories. Uh, WrestleMania 32 is completely changed. You know, if Rollins is even a part of it. Right. You know, so... Well, it makes me wonder if... what. Do you think this is a... Rollins being injured and now not being on TV is in a wrestling capacity is a blow to the company that they need to hurry up and put a Band-Aid on? Or do you think this is a fresh start that something, you know, better can come out of it? You know, I would like to think that something better could come out of it, but I honestly feel like that we're just going to get more of the same old, same old. Um, if they weren't intending on awarding Roman Reigns the title at Survivor Series, I'm pretty sure he's going to get it anyway now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm actually not sure. I I've got a theory on the Survivor Series coming up. i got a theory that Roman Reigns, whoever he's in the finals with, they're going to have a, a battle. Mm-hmm. And that, and I, I hate that we always that we already know Roman Reigns is gonna be one of the yeah, final two. You know it, you know it. And that whoever it's in there, it might be Owens, but I don't know. But whoever's in there with him is gonna lose. Here's what bothers me. And I feel like that Sheamus is gonna cash. Okay. So I think Sheamus wins. walks out of Survivor Series. So I, I'm really champ. Yeah. I feel like Here's what bothers me is some of the and like I don't know if it's it has to be, obviously, because these brackets are obviously predetermined of who goes where. Cesaro versus Reigns. And you know they're going to put Reigns to go over Cesaro. Mm -hmm. That hurts so much. It does. And it's nothing against Reigns because in the years since WrestleMania 31, Reigns has upped his game. Yeah, he no, has absolutely. become a better performer. He's become a little bit better on the mic because he hasn't been talking as much. But it's just like, dude, come on, Cesaro. You know, recently I saw a photo online of Ric Flair, Ziggler, and Cesaro in business mm -hmm. suits. I was like, man, I could just, perfect stable, right there. You know, add one more guy, so I don't care who, but perfect stable. Yeah, totally. 
you know, is Re- Roman Reigns ready? I we're going to see Roman Reigns as a WWE you're, champion. You're going to, yeah. How soon? I don't know, but we're going to. It's just I don't want it to be forced. I want I want to see Roman Reigns as champion, but I want to see him as champion in the way that we wanted to see Daniel Bryan as champion, mm-hmm. where it's organic and the fans want it, right. not that the company is making us think that we want it. Well, I think that with the way things are set up now and with the the injury to Rollins, that you, you mean whether he was going to get the belt at Survivor Series or not, it's a guarantee. It's a shoe in that he's going to get it. Well, they said he was. I was reading that uh, Reigns was actually supposed to get the belt yeah. before the end of the year. So that really doesn't change anything storyline-wise. But it, Kind it, of. The funny because thing now, is, because uh, they were saying it was going to be uh, either Rollins was going to be involved in the title picture mm-hmm. at WrestleMania or he was going to be like one-on-one with Triple H. But now that frees up both because he, you know, we don't know if he's going to be there. Well, six. That when is WrestleMania in March? March. No way. There's no way he's going to be there. That's only five months from now. Right. So that doesn't even give him. You know, they said six to nine. That's not even in the wheelhouse. He won't be there. And then, uh, speaking of WrestleMania, I've heard a lot of crazy things about WrestleMania about how like they're scrambling now to figure out a card for WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Um, because I guess a lot of things they were counting on aren't going to happen. I guess they were counting on Rock being in a match at WrestleMania, yeah. but now Rock's filming a movie at the same time WrestleMania, and the only way they're going to get the Rock is if they cover the insurance for the the production company no. in case he gets injured. You, you misunderstood that. I did. Yeah, it's the insurance company won't. It, Rock would have to pick if he can't do the movie, mm-hmm. or if he chooses to do WrestleMania in a wrestling capacity, they won't cover. Well, I guess kind of, yeah. They won't cover. They won't cover the insurance, and you could kiss the movie goodbye because they don't want to risk him getting injured. Right. Um, they said he still might be a part of WrestleMania, just not in a wrestling. Well, capacity. no. What what I understood was that if he wrestles, that anything that happens to him, it would be on WWE's head. Gotcha. That's what I meant. Okay. Is that they would incur anything that came out of it? Right. Now, will he? Show, yeah, he'll show up. Sure. Oh yeah, he'll be there. But then I've heard like that there's rumblings that the big match with Undertaker is going to be Cena. I've heard that, and, and I'm uh, all for it. Yeah, that's that, that, because if anybody's deserving to face the Undertaker that's on the current roster, it is Cena. Whether you love him or hate him, everything that Cena has done, why has he not faced the Taker already? Yeah. You know? Oh, they've never had a match. No, really. In all those years that Cena's been around, he's never wrestled Taker. I do not believe he's ever wrestled Taker. What the hell? Yeah. That's crazy. You know, that's another thing people bring up in this tournament is people are like, oh, and it's so stupid because John Cena's not even in the tournament, but I've seen people online like, I want John Cena to win the tournament so, so he can, you know, beat Ric Flair in, in championship reigns. It's like, dude, he's not even in the tournament. Have where you not noticed they, he's not even around? Where were they a couple months ago when he almost won and people were like, no, you can't play, break or SummerSlam. Yeah, right? SummerSlam. Because that's when John Stewart interfered. Yeah. It's like that thing I was telling you about Rousey earlier. Speaking of Rousey. Ooh, excuse me. The dissenters only show up when you lose. Speaking of Ronda Rousey, yeah, this past Saturday, Ronda Rousey lost her first fight in her professional career. Wow. Did you see it? I did not. Uh, ended in round two. What? You could just see the, the panic on Ronda's face. Like, she just looked like, she had that look like, oh, man, I'm, I'm getting my ass handed to me. You know, and it came like there was a, if I remember, there was a straight left. Her face was busted, dude. Yeah, I, I, her face looked really red. Straight left, and then she kind of stumbled, but she stumbled backwards, like with her back toward her opponent to home. And then when she turned around, she caught that left kick right yeah. to the neck, and boom, that was it. It was a wrap. So my thing with Ronda Rousey... Yeah, I saw is, the knockout, but I didn't see the whole fight. Like how you're saying, you know, all the people are coming out, and oh, I'm glad she lost, blah, 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 you know. Just jumping on the bandwagon here. In your opinion, does Ronda Rousey's stock dive now that she has been proven that she is beatable? In UFC, yeah. You know what I mean? Or just in general, like just just people's view of her. Because every right before Saturday night, before this match, Ronda Rousey's a beast, Ronda Rousey's this, Ronda Rousey's that, and Ronda Rousey was creme de la creme. Yeah. But, you know, she got taken down. So now do people look at her, you think people's perception of her is going to change. Oh, absolutely, because it already has. It already has. Because up to last night, up to 
up to her loss. I'm sorry, not last night, but up to her losing. Mm-hmm. All, like I told you before we recorded, all I heard was like, oh man, she's the badass and, you know, she she's the best. And there were no, there was no one saying, I hate Ronda Rousey, she sucks. But now that she's lost, it's like, I'm glad she lost. She had a, a, a bad attitude and, you know, she was a crappy fighter and a crappy person and she deserved to lose. Where was all this dissent before the fight? I agree. And then I even heard someone mention, like, they were like, you know, she deserves to lose because of, uh, oh, man, I, now nah, I forgot the fighter's name. She, the, her last fight. Okay, I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the girl's name she fought, mm. but I actually went back on YouTube and I found the yes, fight in full. Like and I watched it and the fight went three rounds mm-hmm. and Rousey tapped the girl out in the third round. But I expected some kind of disrespect or diss. And when I got it, it wasn't as hardcore as people were making it out to be online. Right. And what it was is that when it was over and they both got up off the mat, the girl went to shake Rousey's hand and she wasn't having it. Right. And then when Joe Rogan did the fight interview, she said, you know, no disrespect as a fighter. She came in here and she fought, you know, we went to war. She's like, but she said some personal things about family and, you know, I, no, you don't do that. I respect that, yeah, man. That you know, there's valid. there's talking crap to build up the fight, but there's a line, man. And, right. you know, you got to keep semi-respectable with your trash talk. You know, I give the woman credit because the woman went in there and fought someone that was a bona fide badass. Right. That she might have a possibility of losing against. Do you think Mayweather will ever do that? Of course not. That'll never happen because he doesn't have the balls. Ronda Rousey's got more balls than Mayweather. Speaking of UFC, Dana White last uh, on Saturday during the post-fight mm-hmm. conference was asked about CM Punk debuting. Oh, yeah? Said uh, he should be ready to go by summer of, of uh, next year. Said people just relax and give him time to train. Like, the guy signed in, what, November, December of 2014? Yeah, seriously. But whatever. It How is much it time is. does he need to... Tr- it's- it's like we were talking about earlier before we started recording. It's to the point now where it just doesn't feel like I'm excited for it anymore. They're going to have to do a lot to sell right. me on wanting to watch this fight. Not just wanting to watch it, but probably paying for it myself. Like, and see, this is what really ticks me off about Punk. Okay? I will say, if Rousey's on the card and Punk is on the card, I'll probably order it. That's why I don't order the UFC stuff. It's like, why am I going to pay 50, 60 bucks for, for one fight? For just to see not the even, one fight? Not even a fight. To see a couple seconds worth when I can just wait till the next morning, wake up and watch it on Facebook in under two minutes. Yeah, no, seriously. You know? My whole issue with Punk is is the guy talked so much crap about, you know, like, I'm going to go in and, like, I have the conditioning for it and I'm already like, if you had the conditioning, why is it now going on into year two of your training? Like, if you had the conditioning, we should have seen a fight in six months. At least. Uh, uh, because you know what? These fighters don't train f- for a year for a fight. Uh, they don't. Some sort of, like, sparring Like, six fight, weeks. You know? Six weeks. You're right. That's another thing with the Rousey fight. People are, credit, are, are, are discrediting her, saying that, you know, instead of, like, training, she was jet-setting around doing interviews and all this stuff. And it's like, isn't that what you do? Yeah, you're a champion. You That's have to what do you that do. Stuff. That's also helping to promote the fight. You know, maybe she shouldn't have shown up at a Bernie Sanders rally. Instead, she should have just, like, what the hell does that have to do with anything? Right. Like, she fought a legitimate badass. Yeah. I give the woman credit for not being scared to get in there with someone that might beat her. Because I don't think a lot of people that are in the real fight game nowadays have that kind of tenacity. You know, it's all about, okay, who's going to give a good show that I could beat so we can make more money? Right. You know what I mean? That's that's why I hate about boxing, dude. Is I don't feel like boxing promoters promote to give you the best fight. Mm-hmm. Like, they promote to give you something that's going to look good, but it's going to keep their guy wearing the gold. Right. No, I want to see the best. So I give her credit, man. You know, and everyone's got to lose sometime. Oh, of course. Everybody's got to lose sometime. Of course. Unless right. you're GSP. What? Hey, dude, he no, retired I, from the UFC undefeated. No, I, I, ain't, I ain't even knocking it. I just, I just thought it was funny, that's all. Um, you know, it's, it is what it is. I mean, if anything, the girl could come to WWE now and she's, you know, a legit badass. Right. 
that will punk out some of the talent there. Speaking of WWE talent, did you catch the debut of, oh my lord, I, I hate myself for not remembering her name now. You make me sick. Oh no, I had her name in my head and I lost it. She's The Rock's cousin. Yeah. Nia Jax. N- Nia Jax. Nia Jax. Nia Jax, that's it. Did you catch her at all? Yeah. Big intimidating woman. Yes, she is. I'm proud to see that WWE is not afraid to go outside of their cookie cutter mold of what a diva should be. I have to agree with you. And I feel the same thing with Asuka. Which bothers me, the, the pronunciation and the spelling of Asuka. Because there's a U in there, uh-huh. and if you pronounce it the way it's written, it's Asuka. And Asuka is Spanish for sugar. Really? Yes. So her name is basically well, sugar. Well, that's the same thing with uh, What's-His-Face. Uh, damn, I forgot his name now. Because he hasn't been around. Kenta. Oh, Hideo, uh, Hideo. Hideo Tommy. It's like, what, first of all, why do they got to bring these Japanese wrestlers in and rebrand them? That's okay, because it's a new beginning, but at the same time, I like that they're ad- acknowledging where they came from right. and they're branding them there. So it's like a bridge, like, okay, this is who you were, this is why we signed you, this is a new chapter in your life from now on, this is who you are. Right. Now, I'm, I'm cool. not, I didn't mean to compare Nia Jax to, to Asuka, because clearly they're not the same body type. Right. But Asuka no, is, is also not your typical WWE diva. And this is something that's funny that I know a couple people that bothers that have watched her matches is that she's got some jiggle. You're talking about uh, Nia Jax? Asuka. Oh, yeah. But it's that good jiggle. And I think she's like, hot. They're no, like, they just, I like it. They're like, it just weirds me out. And I'm like, you know what? That doesn't bother me because she gets in the... She's a technician, dude. Oh, yeah. That girl can wrestle. And she makes anybody she wrestles look like crap. Mm-hmm. Like, I, they better never put her, they better never, ever, 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 think about putting Eva Marie in the ring with that girl. Nah, she'll kill her. Never. She'll kill her. I think, you know, she, that, I'm, I'm cool with that jiggle. Hell, I'm even cool with Nia Jax's jiggles. I was, sadly, unimpressed by Nia Jax. You know what it is? It was a lot of hype. You know, these promos that they were cutting. Um, but I do think she has a lot of potential. I mean, she's still learning. That's what a lot of people forget that NXT is developmental. It's, yeah, no, it's, totally. it's also a third brand, but these guys and girls are still learning. You know, which a lot of people are giving, like people like Eva Marie. She gets a lot of crap. You know, like, dude, she doesn't belong here. NXT, bottom line, is a developmental. She is learning. She's also getting that TV experience. So... She's learning a whole. Yeah, but craft. she's been around for three years. Yeah, but that's not her fault. She hasn't really been training. They just been. She's been running around doing interviews and yeah, red carpet why? stuff. But that's because that's what the company wanted. But yeah, obviously it's now they're looking. Now they're looking at it as okay. We want her in a wrestling capacity. So you're doing what you're told. So now you have to go and train even harder. So but don't you think they want her in a wrestling capacity because of fan backlash? Well, now, not before. Which like is why you're she a wrestling didn't have the company, okay? Why would you hire someone? And then not train them. Oh, man, we can go back way and name a bunch of people like that. But it's just the way the business goes. Because I guarantee you, they looked at her and they're like, she's marketable. She has a look. That's the first thing that came to mind. Then they looked at her and like, do you know what an arm bar is? And she's like, um, what? But I guarantee you, it was that. Look at Trish Stratus when she first started. She came in as a fitness model. And everybody, like, discredited her. And look at Trish Stratus' uh, reputation now. Oh, Look at the that. legacy she left behind. True that. You know, and it's not like Trish was, you know, an overnight sensation. Because when she came in, she was um, a she valet. She was just like a valet, yeah. Yeah, you know. It, sh- it took her a while before she had her first match. But, like I said, look at the legacy she left behind. So who's not to say that won't happen for even Marie or for even Nia Jax? You know, it all comes with time. Time and dedication. Okay, I'll tell you this much. Uh, even Marie had a match on NXT a couple weeks back. She was in the ring, and as much as I despise her... Mechanically, she was moving better. It, I'm telling you. Like, her presence was starting to come, like... It's the confidence. She was starting to look a little more confidence. natural. Exactly, and it takes time. And you only get that when you perform in the ring mm-hmm. on the camera. I mean, she may be performing like that every day at the performance center. Right. But it's not filmed. So it's, it does a different thing to you mentally, where you know you're being filmed. So now it's like, okay, I really have to do this right. And you're more focused. So, yeah, you got to get used to it. 
You know, there's one thing being in front of a camera when you're on Total Divas and you're sitting with your family being filmed, talking about how, you know, you want to get married behind your dad's back. And then there's another thing when you're being filmed because you know you're, you have the potential to hurt someone. Someone can hurt you. If you screw up, there is no editing the way there is on, like, Total Divas. So there's a lot more that goes into it. So, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, sitting here saying that I'm an Eva Marie fan, but I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. You know, ask me if they keep her on the schedule she's on. And she's on NXT every week, week in, week out. And she's wrestling every week, week in, week out. And this time next year, she's still as bad or still as green. Then I'll be like, okay, you're right. But then from now till next year, if she's doing that and you can see that her game has improved, look at Roman Reigns. When he was with the Shield, yeah, it was cool because he was part of the faction. You didn't really see his weakness. Right. Solo, when he first went solo, we saw the weakness. But you give it time, and he's starting to build up. You know, so I, I say the same thing with them. So going back, you know, we uh, we mentioned the changes to WrestleMania 32. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they were, as of like two, three months ago, hyping this up to be probably the biggest WrestleMania uh, with all the stars that they were going to have. And, you know, now well, they're trying to outdo last year, too. or And the last time WrestleMania was in... Austin, I guess. It's just a big cluster now. We have, it's like everybody running around with their heads cut off. Just don't know what's going on. Um, but here's my... And we kind of touched on it, but I just want to ask you in general. Do you think it's time for Roman Reigns? Do you think it's his time now? Or do you think he's still got some mileage to go? I At this point, it's... I mean, it was inevitable. So, I mean, obviously it's not going to be organic like the Daniel Bryan thing. But, you know, was it ever... Well, yeah. Well, here, with Roman Reigns, you know, set to be in that position, Rollins gone, Brian gone, you know, all these people gone, do you think now is a time that the WWE really needs guys like Randy Orton and John Cena? Yes. You know, with Cena just taking time off, not being yeah. injured. Orton is yeah, injured. Orton's, Orton's Plus, injured, he just got married this past weekend. But he's out injured, you know, and Cena's taking time off. But do you think if they were on the roster actively at the moment with Rollins being injured that they would make a potential difference or would it be something where it's just like them again? I think that if just by judging WWE on merit, had John Cena still currently been active on the roster, I feel like title would be get thrown at him. Mm. I feel like we probably would have seen Cena on the opposite side of that tournament bracket and you would have immediately known oh, this is going to come down to Roman Reigns and John Cena. Yeah. Because it's something we, we haven't seen. Here's what I think the final two. You say Reigns and uh, Owens. Possibly. I think Reigns and Ambrose. Really? Yeah. Because Ambrose was on the opposite side of that as he well. He is on the opposite side of that as well. So I think it's going to come down to those two. And then obviously one of them will turn. Which likely would be Ambrose. Yeah. Or they could just like legit, you know, just have a good match and be all respectful and stuff like you know, that did used to happen back in the day. It used to. You know, Hogan, Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, but there's no quote-unquote drama. And the only reason that Hogan, Ultimate Warrior thing happened was because Hogan was on his way out to go film Thunder in Paradise. Uh, really? Yeah. That's why he dropped the belt. He wasn't there for a I thought while. Thunder in Paradise came on. Are you sure about yeah. that? Are you sure? Yeah. Because I feel like Thunder in Paradise, that came on like after his Nitro days. No, because... That's how Eric Bischoff got the meeting with Hogan because they were filming Thunder in Paradise at the MGM Studios, and that's when Bischoff got in to talk to him about coming back out. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So now the Usos are back. The Usos. Uso. I've noticed that since the Usos have come back, there's been a lot of lot less talk involving the Dubbies. Do you think it's something where creative was like, oh, well, we got our tag team back. We don't need the Dudleys. They can play the back role. Or do you think it's something that the Dudleys are like, you know what, let these kids shine. This is what they deserve. Because it could be. I want to see the Dudleys versus the Usos. I feel like, I think Bubba and Devon really came in as more of like a building block yeah. for the tag division. Because if there's one thing that they're not lacking is it's teams. Mm-hmm. But... Teams that have a pedigree, yeah, there's a lack of that. Um, and then there's a lack of teams I think people just don't give a, a crap about. Right. You know, Lucha Dragons, I don't think they really got as much of a... I don't think Lucha Dragons went as over as they were with the NXT audience. I don't think the Ascension has went over. I think the Ascension could have went over, but I think that they 
that was like, you know, they shot themselves in the foot with their mishandling of the Essential when they came in. I agree. I think you need the Dudleys. I think when the Hardy Boys come out, you need them. Yeah, I like how you said win the Hardy Boys. Yeah, when they come. Because, well, of course they're coming back. Yeah, we, we all know TNA is a sinking ship, man. Speaking of guys coming and going, Alberto Del Rio yeah. made his return. Shocking. Right? But I'm so happy. I don't like the Mexa America angle, especially teaming him up with Zip Coulter. I do like that it's brought Jack Swagger back to uh, Raw and SmackDown as opposed mm-hmm. to just being on main event. Um, my thing with Alberto Del Rio is he had previous dates. And uh, are you familiar with WWC, uh, the rest of Carlos Colon's organization in Puerto Rico? Well, it's uh, Carlo, Carlito and then uh, one of the Matadors. Because, you know, one of the Matadors is Carlito's brother, the other one's his cousin. Right. Uh, well, their dad, the brother and Carlito, their dad, owned, Carlos Colon, owns the WWC in Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, there was a clip online. If you guys are listening, please go look for this clip. It's promoting a match because Albert. I guess WWE has decided to let Alberto finish prior dates that he had before uh-huh. re-signing. Um, there's a match where they promote, and it's it's the way that this whole promo went down. Um, this, in my opinion, is how you film a perfect uh, promo to an upcoming fight. Uh, they were at Shawn Michaels Wrestling School, I believe, in Texas, uh-huh. and the camera's following somebody's feet, and the, the camera pans up, and you finally see that it's Del Rio. And he's at this school, and he's shaking hands with all the students in the ring, specifically one of them. So he's like, oh, you know, and the whole thing is done in Spanish, too. So obviously, because it's Spanish television. So, I mean, I understood it. If you were to watch it, you'd be like, what? But the whole thing basically is him saying he came, he, he wanted to introduce himself to all these students, you know, uh, and show them what it takes to get to where he's at. So he's like, he wants to actually do some in-ring work with one of the students. So he grabs one of the students and he's like, you, aren't, you look familiar, aren't you the son? I can't remember the guy's name. He's like, aren't you so-and-so's son? And the guy's, the kid's like, yeah. And he's like, you know, me and your dad go way back. You know, he's like, um, he's like, not, we're, we weren't good friends, but we go way back. So they're talking and Alberto's starting to punk him little by little, you know, saying how he's like, you know, it's okay that you don't understand this because, you know, you come from Puerto Rico mm-hmm. and your dad's a moron and he didn't teach you this because he's not a real man because the real men come from Mexico. He's like, but it's okay because I'm going to show you how to do it. You know, so it's, it's stuff like that. And then little by little, he's bullying this kid, uh-huh. you know, and you start to see it. And then the only thing that killed this whole promo for me was the camera twice cuts away to get reactions of some of the other students. And it's super... Uh, soap opera-ish. They're like, <gasps> like it's just horrible. The cutaways. Nice. But besides those two cutaways, everything else went really, really smooth. You know, he's like, you know, it, it's okay. He's like, do you do you know this and do you know that? And he's like, and he, like he starts like hitting his breasts because the kid's chunky and he's like bouncing his boobs. He's like, what are these? Why do you have these? You know. And I, as a kid, being a chunky kid, I hate it when people do that to me. Like my cousins used to do that. Uh-huh. Like, we used to get in fist fights all the time. Because they're, like, Alberto slapping his breast. And he's like, dude, what is this? You're not a man. This isn't man. He's like, you got boobs. What is this? You know? So he's really egging his kid on. And the kid tries to turn away a few times. And Alberto keeps grabbing him, like, by the shirt, by his arms. He's like, where, 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 where are you going? Where are you going? We're not done. You know, I'm trying to teach you a lesson. Right. Don't you want to learn from a real man? He's like, now you're disrespecting me because you keep walking away from me. You know? And the kid's getting nervous. And he's like, you know what? I understand. You know, like I said, your dad, I, I get it. He's a punk. You know, he's Puerto Rican. Blah, blah. He's just going on and on. He's like, I want you to give your dad a message for me, you know? And he just open hand slaps the spit out of his kid's face, just horribly. And then he puts him in the arm bar. And the kid's on the floor screaming, and all the other guys are sitting there trying to break him up. And he's screaming, he's like, if any one of you's touch me, this is, you know, you're next. And, like, they're trying to get him off, but they can't work. And it's, it was just a great promo. And then he looks, he's like, you tell your punk dad I'm coming for him. You know, I want my match back. And, blah. and it was just a great build. So for the fact that the WWE let him go do this, I mean, you got I'll find the clip for you and I'll post mm-hmm. Like I said, you might not understand it, but visually, you'll definitely right. get it. And it's still worth watching, even if you were totally. watching it on you. Didn't you post that on Facebook already? Yes. I believe you, yeah. I, I'll find it. I'll find it and check it out. It was good. Now it that you've good. explained the scenario to me, I, like, I didn't want to watch it because I was like, what if I don't like have any idea what's going on here? I mean, it's right. not going to have the impact not understanding but what's being said. But now I understand is. the scenario. That's what it is. Basically, he goes to the school because he found out and they're playing it like this guy is his mortal enemy or right, whatever. Right, right. And uh, he also mentions that uh, he was like, I want to do to you, I want to embarrass you the way your dad embarrassed my friend Ricardo. You know? You, we all know Ricardo Rodriguez. Right. So I just, I, I like that dynamic. So I guess now explaining it to you that way. So you see he's going to pick on his, it's almost like WrestleMania, 
was it 17? Yeah, WrestleMania 17, Undertaker versus Ric Flair. Remember how Undertaker kept trying to go with Ric Flair and having a match. But, and Ric Flair wanted to do it, but he was the quote-unquote co-owner. So WWE was like, the higher-ups, they were like, no, you can't do it. You know, it's against things. So Undertaker goes to developmental, OVW back then or wherever it was, uh-huh. find Ric Flair's kid and whoops him bad. Bloodies him up in the locker room, takes his blood, smears it on, and he's like, come on, Flair, you want a match now? You going to fight me now? You know? So it's almost like nice. that. Uh, but I just thought the fact that WWE is letting Alberto do these kinds of things, mm-hmm. uh, awesome. And, and, you know, it's great exposure for WWE. As oh, well absolutely. Because... Alberto is their current United States champion. So even if it's, I mean, most wrestling fans in Puerto Rico watch WWE. Same right. thing with Mexico. But to see, like, okay, he's a WWE champion. And I'm sure because of the, there's not as many restrictions on those. So don't mention that he's part of, the, he's the WWE US champion, mm-hmm. you know. So it might get somebody who hasn't watched in a while to be like, I want to go watch now. I right, right. Back. You know, they might not know he's back. Now, what do you think about them pretty much handing him the, the U.S. title when he comes back. They said that that was planned from the get-go, that they had already knew that they were going to re-sign him, and it was always planned for him to be the one to surprise uh, and upset Cena. Really? Yeah, they said that, that was already in the pipeline. So I, I don't like that it happened so fast. You have all yeah. these guys coming in and trying to be Cena. Alberto comes in, kicks him once, and he's done. Yeah, yeah, you know? totally. Like, whatever. But, hey. Do you think that uh, that makes me wonder if he'll show up back on Lucha Underground if now he's done? No, he's done. He's done. He's done. He's back with WWE full-time? Yeah, he's done. Yeah, I don't really care for the Mex-American thing. It kind of seems weird. It is. Um, I think the people wanted to see Alberto come back as a face. Yeah. I don't think they wanted to come back as a face. I think that was the only way for them to do it. Yeah, and they, they came back as a heel. And for him to be paired up with Zeb Coulter doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. You know, especially the last time we saw Zeb Coulter on TV, he was bashing and talking about we need borders. And yeah, things. yeah, totally. All of a sudden, he's back on TV in a wheelchair, which they don't explain. And he's best friends with Alberto Del Rio. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Maybe you know? Alberto, like, beat him up and he's brainwashed him down in Mexico or something. I don't know. Um, we're almost done here, so we'll run through. Um, have you seen, did you see this past week, uh, The Undertaker going mainstream? I did. On Jimmy Fallon. Yeah. And tombstoning Brad Maddox. Right. This is a turkey. What do you think about that? It doesn't surprise me. It kind of does me because this is The Undertaker. He's never really done anything like that. Well, it's 25 that. years, man. You know? I, I get that. He's on his way out, so it's time to do the things you would normally do, you I know? I guess. There's... Now Undertaker gets to be like, I was on The Tonight Show. And so does Brad Maddox. Brad yeah, Maddox. exactly. Do you think that like maybe just kind of disillusions the character a little bit of The Undertaker? Not really. At this point, I mean, I at this point, kayfabe is like, you know. That's completely dead and buried. It's dead, so. I do like that... Uh, he, you know, he came out, does the whole shtick. He yeah. stays in character the whole time. Jimmy Fallon tries to shake his hand. He gives him the look. Yeah. Like, don't touch me. Yeah, I that, like that. that. Good. Uh, but speaking of uh, Taker, so like you said, we got 25 years coming up at Survivor Series. Taker and Kane versus the, return, the Wyatts. The return of the Brothers of Destruction. The BOD, the Bods. Who thought that was going to happen? Uh, well, we all kind of did. My boy McGoy called that stuff. I was talking though. about it. He was like, they're going to come back together. I'm like, really? You think so? Yeah, we knew that. I thought they were done. So here we go. Is it going to be... A handicap match, do you think? Where it's Taker and Kane versus all four members of the Wyatts? Do you think Taker and Kane end up getting partners? Or do you think it's Taker and Kane versus two of the Wyatts? You know, because really it's because it's Survivor Series. You're going to say they get partners? I would say they get partners. And who do you pick? We've the, talked about this. There's only two people I think can, that can fit in this. Two people. Yeah. Sting and Finn Balor. I'll tell you why. Sting, because... This will be the you know the time that you actually see Sting and Taker working together in some capacity. Plus, it could also sell up, set up. They could lose, and Taker could kind of blame it on Sting, setting up they a possibility of, exactly. a, of a WrestleMania match. Not even WrestleMania, two. maybe Royal Rumble. Yeah, 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 um, that too. But besides that, you got Finn Balor, the Demon, who fits in there, mm-hmm. and that's because if you remember, the last couple of Survivor Series have been all about debuts. Right, right. So that would be an introduction, kind of like them. Showing the world who Finn Balor is. Hey, let's team up with the NXT champion. Because he's the only other guy. If he comes out... Can you imagine Survivor Series? He comes out... Yeah, that would be, be a huge pop for Survivor Series. Imagine those Balor. entrances. Sting's huge. entrance. Undertaker's entrance. Uh, Finn Balor and Kane. Yeah. Um, and then the Wyatts. That'd yeah. be like the mash, hands down. Totally. I totally. can't see anybody else fitting that role. I don't want to see a Randy Orton in that role. I don't want to see a Wade Barrett. I don't want to see a Stardust or an Ascension. I don't want to see any of those guys. 
No, I agree. That would be awesome. That would be that awesome, would be. man. That would be um, awesome. And finally, two, uh, I guess, negative things here. For one, Billy Gunn was just recently fired by WWE. Really? Yes, as a trainer. Um, they found out that he was taking uh, like some type of steroid. I forgot exactly what it was. And uh, because he was, this was years ago, though. He was taking it, and he was banned from bodybuilding contests because he tested positive. Uh-huh. He was banned for four years. He never told anybody. WWE just recently found out because the ban was just it's about to be lifted. So they just found out that he was banned for taking illegal substances and uh, and for the fact that he hid the fact that he was a competitor. So they just, they let him go. Well, that sucks. And then finally, um, I mean, there's so much more, but we're going to wrap up here due to time restrictions. Uh, this past Saturday night at 8.40 p.m., we lost another wrestling legend. We lost Nick Bockwinkle at the age of 80. Uh, family said that uh, he died of health issues. Uh, wasn't exactly said what it was. Like I said, he was 80 years old. Nick Bockwinkle, one of the, uh, I mean, just one of the original tough guys, so to speak. You know, because I mean, back then you had a lot of tough guys. You know, Harley Race and uh, just, you know, just a lot. You know, it always sucks. You know, because they always say they come in threes. We've lost Dusty this year. We lost, we lost Piper. Now we lost Bockwinkle. Mm-hmm. You know, like man sucks it really does you know so uh our condolences go out to the bockwinkle family and you know just it, it, it sucks it's never really easy to put into words when you lose a wrestling legend you know yeah, totally um this past week also speaking of losing legends a couple of days ago was the uh 10 year anniversary of eddie guerrero's death yeah yeah you know one of the only three wrestlers that i cried passed away it sucks latino latino Yeah, it sucks to end the end the year and end the season on a negative note like that. Well, there's been as as well as the comic industry, there's been a lot of negativity this year in wrestling. You know, we've, we've seen a lot of our heroes live long enough to become villains. Nice, uh, uh, nice. Hulk Hogan vilified for racist remarks. Uh, Do you Jimmy, think Jimmy Superfly Snuka is going to prison for being a murderer? You know. Do you think that uh, by this time next year Hogan will be back in the WWE fold? It's possible. You will see. Well, everything's possible. You know? But. <laughs> the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if they. He's at WrestleMania. He's at too. WrestleMania, yeah. He's the winner of the Royal Rumble. Right. Like, how did Hogan beat 29 other men? Oh, dude, I took my, my vitamins and said my prayers, brother. Right. I don't know, man. But, um, so that wraps up a year of, uh, the lockup, 23 episodes in. Uh,. I want to thank everybody for listening, you know, um, yeah, <laughs> we'll be back, you know, possibly, uh, next season with this, uh, it's still on the fence, we don't know what's going on yet, uh, cause our seasons usually end right around this time and they start up again in the spring, usually end of February, early March, right around C2E2 season for us in Chicago. Um, so, I mean, we'll keep you guys posted, you can check out everything at comicstreamers.com, we'll, we'll have all the updates, we'll have continued blogs and coverage. Um, and thoughts and opinions. Um, and our reviews of the upcoming pay-per-views while we're off. Yeah. Survivor Series, Royal Rumble. Yeah. And such. Very much. What's in January? Royal Rumble. We'll, we'll be What's doing, in December? Uh, uh, TLC. Uh. We'll be doing a, uh, a Royal Rumble lockup special. Just like on the Spinner Rack, we'll be doing a Star Wars Force Awakens episode. So we'll be doing a Royal Rumble one too. Because to me, besides WrestleMania, Royal Rumble is always an exciting pay-per-view. Totally. Totally. So we'll figure something out for that. It's a big one. But uh, thank you guys and gals for uh, putting up with us this year. Always. And uh, see you when we see you. To the bell rings. <laughs>